Can Grammarly help you become a better writer? I've used Grammarly for years and in this demo video, I'm going to walk through exactly what it does, explain how its grammar checker and various reports work and also talk about how it's using AI to help writers improve at their craft. And I'll also explain how you can get up and running with Grammarly and use it wherever you write. You can try Grammarly for free. And if you take out a free account, you get access to its basic grammar and spell checker, which is a bit more powerful than what you'll get in Microsoft Word or Google Docs. You can also use its tone detector and get access to 100 AI prompts, which actually isn't that much. I've used Grammarly Premium for years. At the time of recording this video, that'll cost you $12 per month if you take out an annual subscription. You can, of course, take out a monthly subscription, which will cost you at least 40% more. Now, if you would like to avail of a discount, I have a 20 25% Grammarly discount. That is an affiliate discount, meaning I earn a small commission. And I'll put a link to that in the notes below this Grammarly demo video. Anyway, if you take out a premium subscription, you get access to everything in the free version. Plus you can rewrite full sentences at a click, which is probably my favorite Grammarly feature. You can also use its plagiarism detector and you get access to 1000 AI prompts per month, which is quite a lot. There is a premium version of Grammarly for businesses. I've also tried this version and basically it has some additional tools for for businesses and for teams. For example, a style guide, brand tones, analytics, and also some advanced security options. It's pretty easy to get started with Grammarly. So you can sign up for free with your best email address or you can sign up with your Google email. And then you can install the Grammarly plugin for Chrome or your web browser of choice. And you can also install it onto your desktop. Once you've activated your Grammarly account, navigate to the apps section and you'll find everything you need. So I'm currently recording this Grammarly demo video on my Mac so I can download the desktop version for Mac and this will run in the background in any writing application, which I'll show you in a few moments. And you'll get a little prompt to install all this for Mac or Windows. You can also add it to Chrome so you can grammar check your emails and documents that you're writing online in your browser. And this will of course change if you're using another browser like for example Safari, Edge or Firefox. You can also use Grammarly for iPhone and for iPad. And I've also tested this and it can be quite useful if you want to grammar check on the go. And there is a version for Android too. On app.grammarly.com, which is the web version, you'll get access to a dashboard where you can see all of your documents that you've grammar checked with Grammarly. Now you can create a brand new document and copy and paste your text into it, or you can upload an existing file from your computer, for example, a Microsoft Word document. Before you start using Grammarly, I recommend heading over to the account section to set it up. Once you're in the account section, click on customize, and then you can firstly go to the dictionary. And if you find there are any words that you use frequently for your writing, so these could be character names if you're writing fiction, or they could be names related to your products or services if you're writing for your company, or basically something that a typical grammar or spell checker won't catch, simply add them here to your custom dictionary. Next, you're going to go over to language and you're going to pick American, British, Canadian, Australian, or Indian English. There are, of course, differences between how words are spelt in American and British English. For example, center is spelt C E N T R E in the UK and C E N T E R in the US. You may also want to look at the writing preferences, but I'll cover that later on in the demo video. I've written an article and pasted it into the Grammarly web app. It scored the article out of 100. So I've actually got an 88 out of 100. So there's not too many issues in the article. If I click on the report, I can see the characters, words, sentences, reading time and speaking time. If I'm a freelance writer, the word count can be helpful if I want to figure out what to remove. And fun fact, a few years ago, I was narrating an audiobook and I used the speaking time report to figure out the length of each chapter in my book. I recommend paying special attention to the readability report. You want to get this score as high as possible, particularly if you're writing for the web. So this is currently 72. So I could perhaps simplify some complicated terms and phrases in this particular article, although it is above average. You can also download a PDF if you want to send this to another writer on your team. If for example, you're using Grammarly Business. Changing your goals inside Grammarly does impact on the suggestions it presents in its reports. So as an example, I've selected the domain casual and informal for formality. For this particular sentence, it hasn't flagged any issues. However, if I go back over to goals and if I select academic and if I select essay, it will highlight a potential issue with the conjunction it's and suggest that I should change this to it is. Swapping from informal to formal will basically flag or ignore instances when you use slang, colloquialisms and other casual language. These are the default settings which I use. 
So the correctness report is the report that you want to pay special attention to. So you can either click on the report and it'll just highlight all of the grammar and spelling issues in your article, or you can unselect it and just simply look for anything that's underlined in red. So if you're short on time, make sure you fix or review the 14 alerts that Grammarly will present. The clarity report is basically a report that highlights sentences and phrases that are difficult to understand. So when you click on this, you'll get suggestions from Grammarly for sentences that you can rewrite at a click thanks to its AI. Now, if you have a bit more time, you can review the engagement and delivery reports. So this basically reviews if your work is compelling for readers. It could, for example, suggest some words or phrases that you could use to simplify things. And the delivery report will also analyze the tone based on what you've picked on your writing goals. The style guide is for Grammarly business owners who have picked custom words and phrases that their company should use. So you may not see this if you're using the premium version of Grammarly. And finally, there is a plagiarism detector, which I'll show you in a few moments. To review these reports, you have a few different options. So you can click through the suggestions on the right or simply go through them in your text. So I wrote at the start of my article, I spend a lot of time considering what creative and business projects to start next. And Grammarly has suggested changing this to, I spend much time considering. And in this case, the suggestion is a clarity suggestion and because I understand the intent of my article, I'm actually going to dismiss this suggestion. And that brings me to a key point. Not every suggestion that Grammarly will propose will make sense for your work. So don't just accept everything at once. You want to review these one by one. Next up, the Grammarly correctness report has flagged an issue in my second sentence. So I wrote, who want to start a blog, self-publishing a book, launch a content website. So in this case, this is a grammar mistake. And Grammarly has suggested I change this to self-publish a book. Makes sense to me, so I'm not going to dismiss this. I'm actually going to accept it. But if I was unsure, I can click on the information icon at any time. Once I click on learn more, it'll give me some examples about why this particular sentence is grammatically incorrect. And this is a good example of how you can use Grammarly to improve your writing skills and knowledge of English grammar. After all, let's face it, it's pretty boring reading a grammar book, but when you're fixing your own work, you're immediately going to learn more about what works and doesn't work. Next up is another suggestion from the Grammarly Clarity Report. It's proposed two fixes for this sentence, which will make it easier to read. So this is a good example of how Grammarly can save you more time than a traditional grammar or spell checker. Uh, I can accept these sentences at a click and improve the quality of my work. So another example further down, it's pr proposed how I can rewrite this sentence so it's clearer for readers. Working like this, I can quickly go through my article and get it ready to publish or submit much faster than if I used a basic grammar checker. Of course, it's not practical to use the web app to grammar check all of your work, which is why I recommend installing Grammarly to your desktop. Now the Grammarly desktop app used to work as a plugin in Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, and in other writing apps. But these days it actually works in the background on your computer and you can use it in any writing application without having to install a plugin. So this is a writing app I use on my computer called Ulysses and I use this to write for the web. And suffice to say it has no plugins or anything like that, but I can still use Grammarly to grammar or check my work on my desktop. The only caveat is I need to be connected to the internet. So it works pretty much the same way as the web app. Basically here is the article in question and at the bottom of the screen you'll see a floating icon that represents Grammarly and if I click on this I can immediately access the three key reports from Grammarly. So correctness, clarity and engagement. Or alternatively I can work through my article and fix the sentences one by one based on the suggestions from Grammarly. And this is how I use it the most. I don't actually use a web app. I use the desktop version to fix articles that I write on my computer. Some Grammarly users do find this floating icon annoying and sometimes it will appear at the end of a sentence which can be really off-putting if you're trying to focus on writing. If that happens to you just simply click on the number then you're going to click on the cog and you can turn it off in your writing application permanently or you can disable it for one hour. And if you want to reactivate it in a writing application just simply reopen the Grammarly app and enable it again. If you've disabled Grammarly in your writing application of choice permanently, simply open settings, go over to block list and just remove the application in question and Grammarly will pop right back up. Sometimes get asked how to use Grammarly to grammar check a longer piece of work, for example, a book. Well, Grammarly does have a character and word count, which I believe is over 10,000 words. Once you go beyond that, it'll slow right down. So the workaround is to use app.grammarly.com and upload individual chapters as Word documents. Or alternatively, you can use the desktop version and just break your book into individual documents that you're gonna grammar check on your computer. And the same workflow applies to using Grammarly in Google Docs. Rather than grammar checking an 80, 
details in Word document and Google Docs, break that into smaller documents that you can check one by one. But I still do recommend working with a human proofreader and editor for longer pieces of work. Grammarly's newest feature is its generative AI tool. You can access this in the web app or the desktop app. Simply click on it and you'll get three different options. You can improve a section of your work. You can identify gaps. Or if you click on more, you can access dozens of different AI prompts for evaluating, ideating, and improving the quality of your article. So I'm gonna close out of this for a moment and I'm gonna click on improve. Now Grammarly is gonna ask me to uh, highlight a section to improve. Once I click on this, it'll scan the text for a few moments and then it'll come up with a slightly different suggestion that I can insert into the article. So I wrote, I spend a lot of time considering what creative and business projects to start next. I get greedy. And Grammarly has suggested rewording this as I spend a lot of time contemplating which creative and business projects to take up next. I tend to get greedy and want to pursue multiple opportunities at once. So it's up to me to decide if I want to use this, if I consider it an improvement or otherwise. Uh, perhaps it's too long. So in this case, I'm going to click on shorten. Now Grammarly has given me a three sentence option that I could potentially use. So if, for example, you want to take part of your article and rephrase it for social media, or you have a blog post and you want to turn it into some email copy, this could be a good way to get longer or shorter versions of the highlighted text. I also like that I can change the tone of the piece of content as well. So let's say I want to make this sound more assertive. If I click on this, Grammarly will just take a moment and then it'll come up with a suggestion that potentially sounds more assertive than what I've written. When it comes to creative and business projects, there's no shortage of options available online. However, don't let yourself get bogged down by an excess of ideas. Hmm, if that doesn't sound quite right to me, perhaps I could make it more inspirational. The world of the internet is an endless source of opportunities for creative individuals who are willing to take risks. So you can see you can get lots of different options for adjusting the tone of my article in question. You can also use the generative AI tool as a type of research assistant while you're working on any piece of content. So in this particular article, I've referenced the famous investor, Charlie Munger. But let's say the reader didn't know who Charlie Munger is. Well, I could spend a few moments researching his biography online, or I could open up generative AI and I could put in a prompt like, give me a three sentence biography of Charlie Munger. Grammarly will take just a second and then it'll give me some text like I could potentially insert into my article. Much like with ChatGPT, the generative AI tool can also help you with mundane parts of writing. For example, writing 10 different headlines for the article in question. So in this case, I've pasted in, suggest 10 blog post headlines for this article. Grammarly will take just a moment to come up with some suggestions. Unveiling the philosophy of Charlie Munger, the investment strategy of Charlie Munger. So lots of different headlines that I could potentially pick from and insert into my article. And of course, I can ask Grammarly to shorten or lengthen these, change the tone and so on. You can also use the generative AI tool to come up with blog post outlines and article outlines. So I pasted in the prompt, give me a blog post outline for an article explaining who Charlie Munger is. Once I click on this, Grammarly will come up with a bullet point outline that I could potentially follow if I wanted to write an article all about Charlie Munger, or I could potentially give this outline to a writer on my team. Again, it's quite similar to ChatGPT. In fact, I believe some of it is powered by ChatGPT, but the fact that it's built right into the Grammarly app, and again, you can do this on the desktop as well, is a bit of a time saver. I found a Grammarly generative AI tool is useful inside of Gmail as well. So if, for example, there are emails that I want to write, but I don't want to spend a lot of time thinking about it, I can simply click on the Grammarly icon, give it a prompt. So let's say I'm handing in my notice to work on my writing business full time. Well, I could put in a prompt like, write me a resignation email. And then Grammarly will give me something that I could potentially paste in and then customize before I send it to my boss. You can also use the generative AI tool to come up with some email responses. So this particular person has asked me if they can publish an article on my site. I don't usually allow this and I don't always reply to these emails, but if I did want to reply, I can simply click on the generative AI tool and it'll give me two different prompts to pick from, decline the proposal or agree to the proposal. So in this case, I'm just simply gonna click decline uh, and then I can click insert or I can use the Grammarly tone detector to make my response more friendly, more persuasive or even more negative. And then once I'm happy with it, paste it into my email and then simply click send. So this could be a bit of a time saver for me or for a team member. One neat little feature that Grammarly rolled out last year is its citation tool. And this is available on academic websites, some news websites and sites like Wikipedia. Not available everywhere. You'll know it's available if you see get citation appear at the bottom of your screen once you're using the Grammarly plugin. So here's an article about the comedian George Carlin. If I click on get citation, Grammarly will give me a citation that I can potentially copy over to my clipboard and then bring over to my writing app. And of course, if I'm not happy with the format of that citation, I can simply click on this and 
and I can change from APA to MLA to Chicago. If you want to create a citation, but this isn't available, there is a manual option on grammarly.com forward slash citations, but you will have to input the details one by one. Once you install Grammarly for Chrome or your web browser of choice, you can access all of the four key reports on the right hand sidebar inside of Google Docs. Or you can simply click on sentences that are underlined in blue or red to fix the grammar errors and other suggestions. Or you can click on the floating Grammarly icon to access its generative AI tool. And you can access the plagiarism detector as well. This is probably the easiest way to use Grammarly with Google Docs. Now bear in mind if the article is 500 or 1000 or even 3000 words, it works quite well. I find if you go beyond that it will slow right down and to be honest you're better off breaking longer google docs into shorter ones Grammarly also offers a keyboard that you can install to your Android or iOS device. The easiest way to get that is to look first on app.grammarly.com and follow the steps there. I went ahead and installed Grammarly keyboard on my iOS device and I just need to make sure I have given full access to Grammarly to see it. Now, if I go to my home screen, I can open up my writing application of choice. In this case, it's the mobile version of Ulysses, uh, which syncs with the desktop version. And then once I click on this, I can immediately see the floating G icon, which represents Grammarly. And if I want to fix or accept that, any of its suggestions, I just simply click or tap on these one by one. Now, to be honest, this is most useful for writing emails in mail or in Outlook or in Gmail. But to be honest, I prefer grammar checking and using the AI writing assistant on my desktop. But it is useful if you're on the go. I've tested dozens of different grammar checkers and writing tools over the years. Grammarly is still the one that I use the most often. I use it the most often because its grammar checker is best in class and more accurate than anything else out there. And I also use it because I find its AI powered writing assistant invaluable. I can use it to accept and fix multiple sentences at a click and also to ideate contents that I'm going to write or publish. And I like that it works really well inside of Gmail. Sure, Grammarly has some quirks, like for example, the floating G icon that I mentioned earlier on on the video. But I think most writers will get a lot of benefit from this tool. You can of course take it out for free or if you want you can use my affiliate link below this video and avail of a 25% discount. If you have any questions about this Grammarly demo or if there's something you're unsure about let me know because I've tested the tool extensively and chances are I can help you. And if you did find this demo helpful then hit thumbs up because it really does help the channel.